When I did my video on the AirPods Max originally, as well as the other one using the cable with the external DAC in the past, both of them seemed well received, but I did notice a lot of similar questions crop up to both. In thinking about how to tie answering those questions in with a new video, as well as talking about the M1 MacBook Pro that I recently acquired, I thought I'd take a look at the DAC and 3.5mm interface on the MacBook Pro has built in, as well as my experiences thus far using some different headphones with it, with and without an external headphone amp. So it's tough to nail down exactly what DAC Apple uses in the 2020 M1 MacBook Pro. It's not listed in any of the specs, and it isn't discussed on any of the review sites that I looked at. I plugged in my old Denon AHD 5000 headphones, both because they're great sounding and can really take advantage of a good DAC when the detail's there, but also because they're only 32 ohms, as opposed to some of my other high-end headphones that are much higher. Figured if any of them stood a chance of sounding pretty good without a big headphone amp, it would be those. At about 50 to 65% of the MacBook Pro system volume, there is decent loudness on those headphones, but I do notice what I've often noticed with headphones that really need more amplification, and that's that the mids and highs sounded decent, but the sound was a little flat, and there was very little bass. Now mind you, the D5000s are bassy headphones. Anytime they have a decent amp, they are very lush in that regard compared to other headphones. So for me, listening to them, the lack of the punch in the bass is very telling about the limitations of this jack. Aside from the anemic bass, the general presentation was pretty solid. Instrument detail was pretty clear, although the soundstage was only average, I would say. Guitar plucking and violins did have good body. In a pinch, it would do with lower impedance headphones, and sounds better detail-wise than the onboard sound from the last couple PCs I've owned, including the Surface Pro. I suspect that the additional headphone jack power promised in the newer series of the M1 Pro and the M1 Max MacBooks would improve dynamics quite a bit. The new headphone jacks are described as being geared for high impedance professional headphones, and I've definitely noticed as a general statement that with both speakers and headphones, a lot of amp headroom really makes a difference. In my case, with this M1 MacBook Pro, having to go to about 65% system volume for decent listening volume probably leaves too little in reserve for those peaks that headphones really get their musicality from. Once I plugged my G6 sound card into the USB hub and ran the headphones out of that instead, everything that had been missing was suddenly there. Ample bass, big lively sound, and a more detailed soundstage where the instruments didn't simply sound good, but they sounded distinct, if that makes sense. If you're mostly using corded earbuds or other very easy to drive headphones, that built-in jack might be fine for you. Those with larger headphones though, especially above the $150 price point, I think you would definitely benefit from better amplification. At first I thought maybe you could get by uh, with the DAC that's built in if you ran that jack into another headphone amp just to give you more power, but some observations I'll talk about in a minute make me question that. If you're in the Apple ecosystem, it's possible that you're using AirPods of some kind. And if you have the AirPods Max, like I've talked about in other videos, and were wondering about using the 3.5mm to lightning cable rather than going the Bluetooth route, I would say probably don't bother uh, if you're only going to be using the built-in audio jack on the MacBook Pro. When I tried it, there wasn't really a, a very noticeable difference to the bass or the soundstage uh, like there has been when I've used sound cards like the G6 or other external DACs. Uh, every time I've used the AirPods Max with one of those, there was a big difference, especially in the bass and the soundstage, when I plugged them into that versus just using them on Bluetooth. But like I said, in this case, uh, running them out of the built-in jack on the MacBook, there really wasn't a whole lot of difference from just using Bluetooth. This says to me that the DAC itself is perhaps more to blame for the weak bass than only the lack of amp power since the AirPods Max use their own internal amp so they always have enough power. And they're mainly just taking the signal out of what they get from the 3.5mm jack. So the fact that the bass doesn't seem noticeably improved with the cable versus Bluetooth but it is improved when you're running it out of a G6 or something else, that suggests to me that the built-in DAC may be a bit lacking. If so, even the additional power of the jack on the newer M1 Pro and M1 Max MacBooks may still not be adequate. Loudness-wise, yes, but if that DAC is just not producing a whole lot of bass, I'm not 
sure that all the extra power is going to make a big difference. After all, extra power for base is only helpful if there's ample base in the source signal to begin with. I could see an argument could definitely be made that as a pro device, the MacBook Pro should have a high-end DAC and strong headphone output built in, or at least be available as an upgrade. Since video and sound production are common uses for MacBook, and headphones pros use for those things are generally expensive and high impedance, the use cases and requirements for them would go hand in hand. For music listening, I find one of the other drawbacks here is the lack of a system-wide EQ. Since Creative doesn't support Mac with its external sound cards like the G6, the G6 will function properly when plugged in with via USB as a DAC and a headphone amp, but you don't get any of the extra niceties that the software provides for Windows users, and one of those, of course, being an EQ. I have been using the G6 uh, without any software on the MacBook thus far, and it's a good experience, but like I said, uh, it's unfortunate to miss that. One big question I saw crop up recently is, do I need a DAC if all I do is Spotify? If you have higher end headphones over $100, you don't necessarily need a DAC, but you would certainly benefit from one. One misconception I've seen is that a good DAC is only useful if you're listening to lossless audio at 24 bit or higher. That's where this question stems from, I think, that if you're quote, only using Spotify with compressed audio, there would be no benefit with a DAC. That has not been my experience. Even on a 256 or 320 kilobits per second MP3, the difference between a basic DAC like onboard audio and that same song run out of a good DAC and a good sound card is pretty noticeable. High bitrate MP3 or AAC still has plenty enough detail that a good DAC will really reveal a lot, as long as your headphones themselves are equally capable of good detail. The only exception I could think of to saying that would be if you're using the free version of Spotify that runs at a much lower bit rate, I think maybe it's like 128 kilobits per second, I think at that point you're probably a person that's just more into having background music on than high fidelity audio and it wouldn't really be worth your worrying about at that point. Generally speaking though, my experience has been that a higher end DAC will expand the following types of benefits to your audio. You could just say as a general statement this is what you can expect. The instruments will be clearer and they'll be better separated, meaning if you shut your eyes, you generally will have a better sense of like where is the guitarist standing versus the drummer versus the bass guitarist versus the guy, you know, playing the saxophone or whatever else. Like you can have a mental image of like where the band is standing based on what you're hearing and each of the instruments sounds distinct uh, and not kind of blurred into each other. That usually is a pretty consistent difference that I find every time I'm using a high-end DAC versus a basic one. The width of the sound overall can often seem a bit wider instead of like, uh, in the worst case, if you had a very narrow sound stage, you might describe it as, it sounds like all four guys are basically standing right in front of me playing their instruments right in my face versus, wow, the guys are like, you know, 10 to 15 feet apart in a large horizontal row in front of me and I'm hearing you know, the, the culmination of widely spaced out instruments coming at me like a big, big wall of sound um, might be how you would describe that a bit. And definitely because of the extra amplification and whatnot, punchier peaks and bass, um, cymbal crashes. If you're watching movies, those explosions or people crash through walls, or hits, things like that, bass uh, hits, uh, all of those things really benefit from extra amp power and a good deck. And so in general, I would say, you know, if you're thinking about it, regardless of the brand you're getting, those are upgrades you will probably notice uh, if you've just been using built-in audio, as opposed to what you might refer to as a flatter, less exciting sound. So, hope that was helpful for you guys. That's going to do it for this video. Uh, throw your questions down below. If you have ideas for things you'd like me to talk about related to MacBook Pros or some of these headphones in a future video, let me know, and maybe I will. And otherwise, I'll catch you guys in the next one.